and welcome back to the Design Assault Studio. In this episode, we're modifying and reassembling the clunky steering box, which is easier said than done. Okay, we're going to have a look at the steering and how this works on the car. So this is the original steering assembly. And basically, there's a motor which powers this gear, which then turns the middle gear. You'll notice it is not turning the big gear. What you have to do is push that gear down and then it will start to turn that big gear. What there is in this gear is like a kind of clutch. I use that in a very loose term. Let's take it apart and we'll see. So you see this gear is in two parts and you've got these two little sort of divots in this one and these two bollocks in that one and basically that engages with the two bits together and there's a spring that pushes them together so it's like a little spring clutch when there's enough force that will slip yeah so when the child's trying to steer that basically slips and that's what allows the kid to actually steer makes a hell of a noise anyway and then we have the primary gear itself which has a big hole through the middle which is actually what the steering column goes through and then a simple bolt that goes through and locks it so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep some of this, but none of that. Eagle-eyed people have spotted this chap sitting in the top corner. And uh, this is the other half of the gearbox assembly. And you'll notice a big rectangular hole. So the plan is that gear will go through there. The servo motor will then... Uh -huh. Put it in the right order. Fit nice and snug through like that. This is my mock-up piece. We have a servo horn which will then attach to holes in the gears, top and bottom, and then if I align them properly. That then allows us, with the servo, to turn the main gear. Obviously this isn't very good. But we only need about 120 degrees of rotation. So when it's uh, in use, the gear moves from this point here to a point here and a point there. And that's the rotation that it goes through. So it's not a huge amount of rotation. We can easily do that with that servo. So here it is put together and we can sort of push and pull the main gear around. There we go. So the servo we're using is a 35 kilo high torque all metal gear servo um, to really help us sort of transfer some power. Uh, next thing is we've got to work out how to um, actually screw the servo in place but there's one other thing that we are going to need to do um, to the gearbox. We need to attach this. A camera won't focus on the part I'm looking at. Potentiometer. Now you might be wondering why we need a potentiometer when we're using a servo because the servo we already know the position of the uh, 
of the servo. That's part of the benefit of using one. But we need to feed the position back to the car's ECU um, for other parts. So ideally, I want that potentiometer to sit somewhere there. So my thinking is that I will drill a hole in that bottom of the case, sit the potentiometer through, and attach. Luckily, a servo horn fits onto a potentiometer. Nice and snugly, I should say. So, my thinking is, modify plastic servo horn to sit onto and screw onto metal servo horn, and then we can read out the angle from that potentiometer. So, let's have a quick try at that. Right, so here we go. We have a double-ended servo horn thing here with this plastic one attached to two bolts either side into the aluminium one below. Currently it's not screwed onto the servo. I'm going to sort that out when I can power the servo up and find centre. We've then got four of these M3 rod ends that control it. So as that turns that, once this is held in place, we will be able to steer the car with the servo, we'll also be able to read its exact position back on the potentiometer. So, we've just got the only thing left to do is to modify this part of the case to uh, allow the potentiometer to fit through, give us somewhere to mount it, and that's roughly where this big bit is. So, we'll drill that off, um, might make a small slot so we can adjust, um, and then we need to have a look at screwing the servo down. So, Let's do the time warp again. Whoop. Well, I didn't quite go as planned. As you can see, I've got a massive hole there now. Uh, basically, tried to cut these sort of ribs down, which wasn't ideal um, as much as possible. But I just couldn't get any clear, couldn't get enough clearance for these heads. These two are right here. I've managed to drop them down a little bit, so this uh, bit where I've relieved it here is fine. But I just couldn't uh, couldn't make space for them. So at that, they rotate nicely in that in that hole. So what I'm going to need to do is come up with a bracket of some type that uh, will help me hold the uh, hold the pot in place above the servo, sort of a little strap that comes up and over, and that uh, and that locks to it. There's sort of a recess on the car where uh, the pot's going to drop into, so we should be okay for clearance. So I'll just just drill some holes, get the servo mounted, and then we're nearly there with this bit. Well, that wasn't a massive pain in the. Thanks for watching. I hope you consider subscribing and hit that like button. If you uh, want to see more, check out our other videos. We've got build series on all sorts of things, including a conversion of a Volvo T5 into a manual. I hope I see you next time. And please look us up on social media. We're at Automotive Tales, or for me personally, at Designersaw on all platforms. Thanks for watching.